my name is Neftali Honig, and I work for African Parks Network in Garamba National Park in the Congo. You can see the park from outer space. It's a beautiful park. It's a very, very special ecosystem. The national park itself is this gorgeous savanna where you get a lot of savanna species. Armed groups that are coming in from sometimes a thousand kilometers away to come and hunt elephants in the park. These poachers are very, very violent. We've sadly lost two rangers in one year. We lost three rangers in the next year. The poachers are good at surviving in the bush. How do we visualize where they are? GIS is definitely helping a lot. The poachers follow at the water. And if you know where the sources of water are, and you can map that, or if you know where viable places to cross a river are, and you can map that, you have a huge advantage over the poachers. They don't have that bird's eye view of the park. I'm really excited about being able to attack these problems. There are metrics like losing fewer elephants, which are really, really encouraging. Beautiful. Naftali. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Naftali, here he is and his crew. Amazing work. In Garamba, we think of conservation intelligence as the fusion of our understanding of the human and ecological landscapes. It's our decision cycle, how we collect, process, analyze, and disseminate insight, and how that ultimately affects park management. Garamba is an unusual protected area. Sure, we have wildlife to manage, we have fire breaks to make, invasive plants to remove, but we do this in a challenging corner of Central Africa. Our human landscape includes understanding and working together with the communities living around the national park, but it also includes keeping close tabs on armed groups, rebel movements, and other conflict dynamics. If we want to protect Garamba, we cannot ignore this reality. We have to accept it and react to it. So we overlay a traditional conservation understanding of the land with one of the most complex anti-poaching efforts in Africa. We act upon the information we receive. Our actions then affect those human and ecological landscapes, and in turn, our various sensors, whether they be rangers, pilots, investigators, camera traps, or even elephants, feed right back into that decision cycle. It's like a nervous system for the park. Sensory input, analysis, and action. So let me show you how we do this. We're in the Congo Basin, right in the middle of Africa. Garamba's to the northeast, on the border with South Sudan, and to the east you can see the border with northern Uganda. You can see a limited transportation infrastructure to the south and to the east and you can see some small towns and villages, and three refugee settlements adjacent to the protected areas. But the national park itself is a wilderness without a single village inside of it. 
up in the northwest at the edge of the Azande Forest, we flew and with our friends from Virtual Wonders with support from the National Geographic Society and did some aerial mapping down to seven centimeter resolution. We're exploring applications for machine learning for detecting wildlife in this remote region and maybe even the entry and exit paths from which poachers can get in and out. You can get a feel for the terrain here, but this is just a small section of an area that's over one and a half times the size of Yellowstone National Park. Over 3.6 million acres of this incredible mosaic of forests and savanna. And hidden in these woodlands, you can actually get chimpanzees living right next to giraffe. And you'd be surprised at how camouflaged a giraffe can be when you're trying to spot it from the air. The wildlife isn't just in the most remote areas, though, even right where we live. Check out these observations right near where the station where we work. Some hippos in the river, a leopard in a camera trap right near our offices. And this is our control room where Evan and I work, manned 24 seven, the center of the park's nervous system, where those sensory inputs from around the park are processed and analyzed. And data streams, like elephant positions for instance, aren't only analyzed for general trends, but actually we're tracking the elephant's positions in near real time. So we collar the matriarch in herds like this one, and we can track the actual elephant's movements. Because of the illegal ivory trade, elephants are under constant pressure. You may have noticed that we have a unique configuration of ArcGIS Pro, and Evan designed it, so let me have Evan show you how it works. We needed a simplified version of ArcGIS Pro optimized for our control room. With this configuration, we were able to reduce training time for our rangers and maintain operations in an environment with an unreliable internet connection. It's awesome living with wildlife, except for when a hippo bumps into your satellite dish and breaks the internet. <laughs> what we're looking at here is a realistic situation that our control room operators in Garamba could be monitoring right now. Here, collared elephants are moving to the east. Individuals in black are moving normally while individuals in red are moving faster than usual. This type of behavior is suspicious, and visualizing it draws our attention to the area and drives us to understand the context and landscape around these particular animals. Naf, maybe you can show everyone some more analysis we can do in near real time. So patrol positions need to be up to date. We can't afford to not know where our rangers are. Whether the control room is offline or online, we have to know their latest position. These hexabins are a composite of poaching indicators like fires, illegal camps, and gunshots. Darker hexagons had more indication of possible presence of poachers, compiling any indicators that were observed recently or around this time last year. The bins are dynamic, and so they evolve over time. As you can see, the elephants are moving away from something, and patrols have been tasked to move towards it. The elephants understand the threat of poachers very well. So by visualizing the data this way, we can actually tap into their intelligence. So we have solid situational awareness, but with these powerful tools, we can take our conservation intelligence approach even further. I've told you a lot about what's going on inside the park, so let's head out over to the edge. Here, from the same aerial mapping project, we're looking at a refugee settlement near the border with South Sudan. Over 35,000 refugees have registered here, many of whom registered just in the last few years. The conflict in South Sudan has put a lot of weapons very close to Garamba, threatening both wildlife and the surrounding communities. A few years ago, almost 1,000 armed rebels entered the park all at once. Despite challenges like these, we've been able to drop elephant poaching by over 90%. And we've been able to serve the surrounding community in the process with healthcare, education, and jobs. But there are still a lot of areas in the subregion that suffer from conflict. And while there are a lot of under-resourced parks on this map, maybe this is an opportunity to protect wildlife and contribute to the resiliency of these communities. So let me introduce my colleague, Jeff Klinning, who can speak more about our efforts across the continent. Thank you, Naf. 
As we've just seen, Garamba has developed an effective law enforcement strategy powered by conservation intelligence. Fortunately, not all the parks we just serve are located in areas of such regional instability and conflict. What our parks have in common are breathtaking landscapes, rich in biodiversity, representing seven African biomes. But across the continent, protected areas are increasing experiencing pressures, and many of them lack the resources to sufficiently protect and manage them. What is not managed will be lost. African Parks is a non-profit conservation organization that takes on the complete responsibility for the restoration and long-term management of protected areas in partnership with governments and local communities. We currently manage 15 parks in nine countries covering 26 million acres. Our work would not be possible without a wide variety of donors and partners from around the world. We have 2,200 full-time staff 1,000 of which are fully equipped and well-trained rangers, and on a project basis, we bring on another 2,600 part-time employees. Working at this scale across Africa's diverse landscapes requires holistic and adaptable management. Our approach to protected area management is built on five key principles. Law enforcement, biodiversity conservation, management and infrastructure, community engagement, and tourism and enterprise. Earlier, NAF presented on the conservation intelligence law enforcement operations in Garamba. Bazaruto Archipelago National Park, located off the coast of Mozambique, requires restoration of seagrass beds, which are crucial to the last viable population of the East Indian Ocean dugong and their ecosystem. A Nedi Natural and Cultural Reserve is a World Heritage Site in Chad. This vast, ancient landscape requires careful management of infrastructure to preserve this fragile desert habitat and its rock art. Adzala Kokwa National Park, in the heart of the Congo Basin, the second largest rainforest in the world, providing clean water, food, and shelter for over 75 million people. Community engagement is required to monitor and manage the harvesting of animals for their meat, estimated at 6 million tons of bush meat out the basin every year. In Lua Plain National Park in Zambia, the construction of King Liberica Lodge serves as a significant step towards the economic revival of the park. All five disciplines are required in all parks. Although their practices may differ, all five are necessary for the long-term sustainability of a protected area. Let me show you how all these come together to support our work. Here we are in Luwandi National Park in Malawi. With the majority of Malawians living off less than $2 a day, Resources such as bushmeat and firewood are heavily relied upon, setting up the stark contrast between inside and outside the park. Successful management in this human ecological landscape requires integrated protected area management. Against the backdrop of these law enforcement pressures, operations have provided a safe place for wildlife inside the park. 36,000 snares have been removed, and mapping our removal operation helps us to identify areas of risk and inform future patrol planning. As a result of this law enforcement impact, rebounding antelope populations supported the introduction of lions in 2018. Through this conservation management action and the carcasses left by this iconic predator, endangered vultures were drawn back to Liwandi. This is just one example of the restoration of the natural ecosystem. Working inside the park alone cannot achieve sustainability. Here's what's going on outside Lewandi. A community development program trains and equips beekeepers to maximize their yields. Geographically organized honey clubs help unlock value through stable access to larger markets. Sustainable livelihoods are powered by an intact neighboring ecosystem. In a neighboring biome in the land of a thousand hills, Akagira National Park in Rwanda is a showcase for protected area management. Through a partnership with the government of Rwanda, ecological landscapes have been restored and surrounding communities strengthened. Under a period of impressive economic growth in Rwanda, Akagira has seen a tenfold increase in tourism, with visitors to the park enjoying the experience through the eyes of a community-based wildlife guide. 80% of the park operations are now self-funded, and half the visitors are Rwandan, who take pride in their natural heritage. 
These lakes in Akagira not only set the scene for ecotourism, but support community engagement and enterprise. This fishing operation generates revenue for both the park and the community while providing a source of protein. The fishing boats are tracked in near real time to enable the management of where and how close to the shore they fish to ensure the sustainability of the fishery. As Akagira and its partners continue to shine, this builds a platform for us to take on bold conservation actions. Just two weeks ago, in collaboration with the European Association for Zoos and Aquaria, five rhino made the historic journey from the Czech Republic to Akagira. This introduction builds upon the 2017 operation. They saw the locally extinct and critically endangered black rhino return to Rwanda. Our work at African Parks has only just begun. The examples we've explored here today are a tiny subset of what is needed to ensure long-term protected area management success at scale. The fact remains that many parks across the continent are under-resourced in the face of increasing pressures. We are grateful for the opportunity to collaborate with institutions like ESRI and the National Geographic Society to contribute towards a common toolkit to support protected area management across the continent. I would like to leave you with this quote from one of our rangers working in Penjari National Park in Benin. I used to ask myself, will I have to take my child to another country to see a lion or elephant? But now I know the answer is no, that Penjari is now being protected and that I too have a role in working here to make sure this park survives because it's for my children and for their children. Thank you very much. Amazing, isn't it? Thank you, guys. Aren't they amazing? They're really amazing. Heroes. Heroes. <laughs>